I'm joined live from Sydney by Ray Attrell, who is Global uh, Research Director at Forecast. So, Ray, tell us, are these tests going to provide investors with the transparency that they're looking for? Well, the reality is we won't know until afterwards and we really get to see at the individual bank level how the, how the tests themselves have been applied. So, um, I mean, in particular, I think one of the concerns is particularly with respect to the exposure to sovereign debt and the possibility of defaults or haircuts on that debt, what the percentages are that are being applied across the Eurozone sovereign bond spectrum. And uh, according to some reports, those tests will only be applied, for example, to the, tr to the bonds that are being held on the trading books of the banks rather than the banking books and there's some suggestion that most of those bonds are actually being held on the banking books and won't therefore be subject to the stress tests. So that's the sort of minutiae that I think until we get the opportunity to dig into it's going to be very difficult to make a broad brush judgment. That said, if it's the case that almost all of these banks pass and the Frank Fant Algemeiner this morning suggesting that uh, the Landis banks will pass as Nicole has just been saying, you think at the individual bank level their stock prices are more likely to go up than down and that's going to drive drag the broader markets up. So in that sense, I think we'll get it. we can look for a positive knee-jerk market reaction, but whether that's going to be the sustained response is, a, is another matter altogether. Right. Now, you were talking about sovereign debt. Do you expect a default in Europe? Do you think these things should have been much more rigorous, these tests? Um, well, I think that it's still, you know, the, the, it, with respect to Greece in particular, as far as a specific sovereign default, I think Greece is the, is the one country that is, uh, has different characteristics to everybody else, including Spain, in terms of overall debt levels and what the fiscal austerity that Greece is subjecting itself to will still leave their debt to GDP levels above almost every other emerging market economy in history, uh, wow. none of whom have been able to, to get away without some sort of default. So I think that the, the Greek rescue plan has postponed rather than avoided the eventual need for some sort of a haircut. So I think that feeds back directly to today's stress test results in terms of what percentage haircut has been applied. Because if Greece does default in one, two, three years' time, you'd have to expect that it would reasonably imply a, a 20 to 30 percent haircut. So that percentage uh, is going to be pretty important today. And what about on the growth front? Do you think that they're stressful enough where that's concerned? We know that Spain is implementing austerity measures that will seriously dent growth. The collective austerity measures across Europe, that's going to really hurt growth, isn't it? Well, my understanding is that the GDP stress test that's being applied is that overall growth within the Eurozone would be 3% below the EU Commission's forecast baseline, which for this year is about 1% and next year, I think, between 1.5% and 2%. So you're talking about growth of more than minus 2%. And that's certainly credible in the sense that we're, we're clearly going into the, you know, the double dip territory were that to be the case. Arguably, we're going into depression if we're going to see you know, growth of minus 3% across the Eurozone. Again, it's going to be important whether there are different growth uh, levels applied to different Eurozone countries because the Greeces and the Spains of the world are almost certainly going to be suffering many years of negative growth. So again, it's the aggregate versus the individual country application of the test is going to be important today. I have to ask you about the euro before you go. We've seen a, a big run up in the euro recently. What do you think the reaction is going to be on the currency markets to today's results? My guess is that the knee-jerk reaction will probably be positive, assuming that most banks have passed and there is a knee-jerk positive European bank stock reaction. Uh, I still think that the euro rally is still based more on the weakness in the U.S. economy and what that's done to U.S yields relative to the rest of right. to Europe and the rest of the world and uh, to the extent that Europe is going to be in for slower growth and, and lower yields going forward I think that implies that the euro uh, reversal will reverse at some point in the coming weeks. Okay Ray Attrell Global Research Director at Forecast we have to leave it there we thank you so much for joining us.